Hi, and thank you for taking a few minutes to watch the video for this year nine options week on GCSE maths. Now, you're probably thinking maths isn't an option. I've got to take it as part of our core subjects, but I wanted to just spend a few minutes explaining why, even though it's not an option subject, you can still approach this as if it was an option and how this can, how the way you approach GCSE maths is really going to make a really big difference to the way you go through the next couple of years and ultimately how you get through college and further. So let's, let's dig into this. I want to go through the whys, the whats and the hows for your GCSE maths over the next two years. So why is maths? Why is maths a core subject? I want you to think of maths not just as a whole load of numbers and calculations, decimals and fractions, but maths has been proven to be one of the most applicable subjects um, across the board in a whole range of different fields. So what you didn't think of instead of as just numbers and algebra and shapes, to think of it like this, applying new information in novel situations. Whatever job you guys go into in the future, you're going to be given information and you're going to be asked to apply that information into uh, your job, into a new situation, into a new circumstance. And that is exactly what maths is. You're given formulae. How will you use those formulae? You're given rules and principles. How are you going to use those in new situations, which will ultimately ultimately be a GCSE paper? So Maths GCSE opens doors for your future. Even if you don't know what you're going to go into just yet, Maths is always, always going to be a brilliant step in the door. So what exam board are we going to be doing over the next two years? It's called Edexcel, also called Pearson, and there are two tiers. So depending on your capacity, we've got a foundation tier, which is grades one to five and a higher tier, which is grades four to nine. So on both tiers, you're able to get what is called a good pass and a standard pass. A good pass is grade five and a standard pass is grade four. So in both of these, you're able to stretch and hit that good pass rate. So what kind of grade, what kind of percentage are we looking at to get those decent grades? So if you're on the foundation course, uh, you'll notice here that a grade five right at the top end is in the top end of maybe 70, 80 percent. It's not an easy one on the foundation paper, but it is absolutely still available for you to be working through. You'll be taught everything you need to do, everything you need to know to get that grade five and open those doors further down the line. In higher tier, if you're looking um, at uh, careers, for example, medicine, engineer, lawyer, and um, you're looking at grade eights and nines to get into university, then the higher tier paper you need to be hitting as well 80 80% 80 to be hitting those grade eights and grade nines. And they used to be called A's and A stars. Um, the grade nine is given really to the top 3% of the country. So it's really the top end. And you really need to be making sure that you're hitting, hitting the ground running in year 10, um, giving everything you can to make sure even the, even the early content in your math GCSE, you know it. Um, all the way through. So at the end of year, of year 11, you will have three papers. Each one is an hour and a half long. Each one is 80 marks. The first paper is non-calculator and paper two and three are both calculator papers. Do we know what's on each paper? No, it can be absolutely anything from your two years worth of study. It's not like you have an algebra paper and a data and shape paper. Every question or any any question, any topic could be on any paper. So there's no um, guidance on that. So you need to be revising everything for these papers. In the test as well, there's also, it's not just easy questions, there's a whole range of different types of questions. And you will hear more about these as you go through your GCSE curriculum. Um, but there are simple questions, which are called AO1, applying standard techniques. Um, AO2, which is about reasoning, interpretate, interpreting and communicating. Um, and then lastly, there are solving non-routine problems. And these take up the most um, of the kind of higher end, uh, higher end grades, because you need to be able to put together different topics and different subjects into one question. So you can see together that those three different types of questions are what are going to be measured in your GCSE. Foundation level you've got 25 percent of the paper is based purely on, num purely on number work um 25 percent is on ratio and proportion and 20 percent is on algebra compared to higher tier paper has a lot more algebra you can see here there's 30 percent of algebra 
in higher tier paper. That's because so much more of it is used than A level and further that is going to be really useful for you who want to take maths at A level or use it into your further education. So how are you guys going to make the most of your maths over the next two years? Like we said, maths opens doors for you in the future. It is a foot in the door to so many different careers, even if you don't know what you're doing um, at the end of high school, even if you don't know what career or job you want to go into, maths is going to be applicable in every single one of them for applying new information into new and novel situations. So this is absolutely your opportunity to control where and how far you go. So GCSE maths, we hope you guys make the most of it. It's two years that are completely under your control in terms of the effort and the impact that come out of that. So I wish you all the best over the next two years as you take your GCSE maths and look forward to seeing the great results you guys get in two years time.